How's it going everybody? My name is Lucian. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your own Linux GSM or Game Server Manager. Uh, this has been out for a while, haven't gone over it yet, so we're going to go ahead and go over it now. It's quite simple. Uh, so we're going to click on servers here, then click on game servers. They do offer Docker, but we're not going to go over that in this video. And then we're just going to pick a random server. We'll do seven days to die. Pretty much any server you select here is going to be essentially the same exact setup, no matter which one you choose. But for this video, we will be doing seven days to die. And you can see here, you got Ubuntu, Debian, and even Red Hat, you can do other distros. You're gonna want to come over to the install and it gives you a list of instructions. You basically just gotta follow those step by step. It's pretty easy. One thing it tells you under dependencies though, you need, to, you need to be sudo or root access to install missing dependencies, which we'll go through that as well. So I will be using Ubuntu server to set all this up. So first thing we're gonna do is SSH into our server. I've already done that. All right, so as you can see here, the first step is to add a new user. This could be any name you want. It doesn't have to be this specific user that they mentioned. This is just what they put. It doesn't have to be that. So we're gonna go back to our console here. We're gonna type in sudo add user. We'll call it seven days, just like that. Enter, go to my sudo password. Then the password for the new user. Then confirm that password for the new user. And we're gonna skip all this information. Boom, just like that. We're gonna have a new user seven days. Now, this user does need to have pseudo access. When you create a new user like this, it by default, it does not have pseudo access. But in order to give that user pseudo access, we're gonna do sudo user mod dash a capital G, sudo, and then seven days, and then we're gonna hit enter. And now this user is a sudoer. So now uh, reading the rest of the directions, we're going to switch that user and then do this following command here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this command. And then we're gonna go back to the terminal and we're going to switch that user. Type in that user's password. And then we are going to right click to paste. This is the console. Then I'm just going to hit enter. And then as you can see here, it tells us the next command to do by default. It's also the same command, the same next command here on the website. So we're just going to do dots forward slash uh, seven days that server and then type in install enter. And we're going to let this run through all of its, uh, stuff all right so right here is asking us to create the server file directory and in this case we do want to do that so it's automatically typed to y4 so we just have to hit enter as you see here there's some things in red that are going through the screen these are all missing but since we are sudo it's asking us for our sudo password for this user. We just have to put in the same password that this user is and enter. And it's gonna automatically install all these missing dependencies for us. All right, once we see this, the server has uh, installed successfully. So it's asking us if it was, in our case, it's automatically set to Y for yes. So we're gonna hit enter on that. All right, and this is if we want to allow to send anonymous usage to Linux GSM. If you want to, it's defaulted to Y. If you wanna change it to no, just backspace that and for no. 
I hit enter. And then that's done. So if we do an LS real quick, you can see the files right here and then our server files. So we can do SD server files, LS, SDMACD, sorry. And then uh, here's all of our server files. So one thing we want to do is we're going to go back a directory by doing CD dot dot. And that just takes us back one directory. And then let me clear all this out so it's nice and clean. If we do LS, you can see here that we have a, an LGSM uh, folder. So we want to open that up. So we're going to CD LGSM and we'll do LS again. And then you can see we have a config LGSM right here. So we're going to open that up. So CD config LGSM, enter, do another LS. And we have one folder in here called SCD server. So we're going to CD into that folder. And then do LS one more time. Then you can see here we have a common default SCD server config, all this kind of stuff. So if we look at the common, so do nano common and hit enter, there's nothing in here. So if we do control X to close that, we can do nano bolt, open that up. So Right here, as you can see, is that the common applies settings to every instance. And then you have instance which applies to a specific instance. So these are the default settings. You don't want to edit anything in here. You basically just want to copy it from here to let's say this. I usually use common when I'm using uh, the service. And um, so let's go ahead and copy that over. So it's a pretty simple command, which you do CP underscore default to common dot CFG and then hit enter. And then our settings are copied over. So now if we go back to nano common CFG, you can see all the uh, settings in here. So the IP address, you have to start up. You have a bunch of other stuff in here to like uh, send like notifications and alerts, as you can see here. Um, I usually don't mess with this personally. However, I mean, if you want to set up, uh, you know, like alerts and stuff, you can do that here. But for all this stuff, I am just going to leave it as the default. There's nothing, nothing here really needs to be changed unless you want to do like alerts and stuff. So we're just going to hit Control X. That one we're going to do CD and then tilde key. This takes us back to our home directory here. We're going to clear all that up. Then we're gonna cd into our server files. And we'll do ls here, just so you can see. And we want to edit this right here. This is our server config. This is where we change like the uh, settings in our server. So start, we're gonna do nano, then sd, pd server to xml. We're gonna enter on that. And then from here, you will need to, you can't use your mouse. You're gonna to have to use your arrow keys on your keyboard. So for server name, you know, you'll go down to this line and then you can change the name of the server. We'll call this Lucian Dev. You can change the description, all that stuff, all your settings to, you know, the server location, port, all these settings here. Um, you know, feel free to go through them at your own pace to, uh, figure out exactly what you want to do. But for now, I'm just gonna leave everything at default except for that server name. I'm gonna do control X, then Y, then enter to save it. And then to start the server, we'll do, go back to our main directory. We'll do dot sdtd server, and then we'll type in start. And then this will boot up our server. As you see here, it's booting up the server with the with the server name that I put, which I put, I just called the Lucian Dev, and the server started. Now, you can view the console on these. Let's go to clear this out so it's nice and easy to read. So you can do sdtd server console. So this right here is important. This is how you exit the console because you do not want to control C it. If you control C it, you will close it out. So you basically want to hit control B and then 
let go, control B, then hit D. So this will this will pop up every time uh, telling you how to exit the console. By default is Y, so you're just gonna hit enter and then it'll take us into the console. And then we can see the server booting up here. So again, if you wanna exit, control B and then D, that takes us back out of the console. So from here, we can go ahead and start up our seven days of die game and make sure that we can connect to it. All right, now that the game is open, we're gonna to click to continue. We want to go on a game. Then you can search for it. So I called Mind Lucian Dev. If we just hit start search, you can see the server right here. And we can click on it, hit connect. Or we can also connect to it via the IP address, which is for our case, since we're hosting this locally, this is the local IP address. And we're going to hit connect. All right, and just like that, we are in our very own Seven Days to Die server. Now, there's one last thing that I want to mention. Uh, if we go to basic usage here on the website, and they'll have this for every server right now, we're just on the Seven Days to Die one, so. But they have this for every single server you select. They have all this stuff in here. You just got to follow the uh, directions. So under basic usage, they give you commands. So, you know, you can always, if you ever forget, if you're not, you know, used to, you know, Linux or, you know, LGSM, you can always come here and look. So you can start the server, stop the server, restart it. The const command that I just showed you guys. Uh, you can update the server, force update. We have validate. So if something gets corrupted, you can always validate the files. You got um, details here for debugging. You got debug, you got the logs. This is the location of where the logs are stored. So if you ever need to look at the logs, this is the uh, location where the logs are. Uh, you can do a backup. If you want to back up the server file, you can monitor it with monitor. And then these are the cron jobs that you can set up uh, for tasks. So. You know, uh, you want like to have the monitor command set up, for example. So if the server ever goes down, you can use this cron job here to uh, to make sure the server stays up constantly. We can show you that real quick. So if we just go to or back to our server here and do cron tab minus E, and then we're going to use nano right here, which is option one. So we're going to enter on that. We're going to scroll down to the very bottom using our arrow keys. I'm going to give us a couple spaces. I'm going to go through and highlight all of this. Or minus this out so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to go through and highlight all this. We're going to right click and hit copy, or you can do, do control C. We go back to our terminal and we're going to right click to paste it all. Then we're going to do control X. Y, enter, and that sets up all of our cron jobs. So we can, uh, so if the server ever goes down, it'll turn it back up. It'll automatically do its updates and it'll update the server and it'll update the actual LGSM, uh, the manager. And that's it guys. Hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'll see you on the next one.